All right, this is fifth grade, module one, lesson 11. And this in, in this lesson, we begin multiplying decimals. However, teachers, uh, I want you to have some patience because we're not going to immediately jump to the rule, the classic rule of pretend they're just whole numbers and then count over the decimal. We're not going to follow that rule. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to teach students some number sense. We're going to teach them how to sh demonstrate or how to display the multiplication in a place value chart. And from there, hopefully, over a course of several lessons, students are going to develop a deep understanding of that rule, that standard algorithm that we want them to learn, uh, but we don't want them to just memorize it. We want it to make sense to them. So here it says, solve by drawing disks on a place value chart. So we're going to begin by, uh, since it says tenths, we're going to make a very small place value chart. We don't need to go huge. Here it is, and here is our tenths, and here are our ones. And it says we're going to have four copies, or four times, seven tenths. So what does that mean? That means I need to draw in seven tenths, and I'm going to do that here. Let's do uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now we've got our four copies of the seven tenths, but now we have to simplify. Oh, by the way, you know what I want to do? Over here, I'm going to show seven tenths times four. And so that's exactly what it looks like, right? So here is our seven tenths times four. Now we have to simplify because, of course, we know any time you have 10 of a number, you can cash it in for 1 in the column to the left. So let's see. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, and I'm going to say, okay, well, let's see. We've got 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 1. And then we've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here's 10, and that's all the tens that we can regroup. So what does that mean? That means we end up with these guys coming over here. 10 tenths equals a 1, and 10 tenths equals a 1. So we end up with two whole numbers, and we end up with 8 tenths left over, because here's the 8 tenths left over. And so our answer is 2.8, two holes and 8 tenths. Another example of that same kind of technique, they want us to demonstrate this in a place value chart. Now it says six thousandths eight times, times eight, right? So I need to make a place value chart, and I'll do ones, tenths, hundredths, and here's our thousandths, all right, and it says we need to draw six thousandths eight times, so the math problem is going to look like this, six thousandths multiply by eight, all right, so I, with the magic of video. I'm going to make this magically appear. And voila, there are the eight rows of six. So there's six thousandths here, and I've got eight rows of them. You'll have to trust me on this. And so we end up with 48 thousandths, because six times eight is 48 thousandths. But remember, Anytime you have 10, you can cash it in. So I'm going to grab 10 right here. I'm going to grab 10 right here, 10 right here, and then 10 right here. So each of those equals a hundredth, so I can cash those in. So I now end up with four hundredths, and I end up with eight thousandths left over. So we end up with four here, eight here, zero in the tenths column, and then here's the decimal place, and zero in the ones place. So our official answer is 0 0.048, or 
48 thousandths. So here we're moving to a different model. Instead of that place value chart, we're going to be using the area model. Where does it say? Draw a model. This Typically, we call this the area model. All right, so um, this is the example that they want us to follow, and so we're going to do that with this problem. Now, whenever we're multiplying, another way to think of this, parents and teachers, this might be a little different from the way you uh, learned this when you were a kid, uh, but finding the area of a rectangle is multiplication, length times width, right? So really, anytime you see a multiplication problem, you can think of it as a rectangle, and you're trying to find the area inside that rectangle. And in this case, the height of that rectangle, or the length, I never know which is which, <laughs> the length is the height of that rectangle is 6, and the width of that rectangle is 7.49. So the way I'm going to break that up is I'm going to break that up into three pieces, and it's not intended to be proportional is we're going to break it up into seven ones, four tenths, and nine hundredths. All right, and there is our rectangle with a height of six and a width of seven ones, four tenths, and nine hundredths. Now we're going to find the area of each of these smaller rectangles. So. The area of this rectangle right here is 6 times 7. So 6 times 7 ones. And I'm going to just kind of jump a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of shortcut compared to what they wrote up here. And I'm going to call this 42 ones. All right. And then right here, we've got 6 times 4 tenths. So that's going to equal 24 tenths. Now, parents and teachers, if you're saying, what does that mean? Relax, hang on, I'll get to it a little in a little bit. But right now, we're just honoring that label. 6 times 4 is 24 tenths. Similarly, right here, we've got 6 times 9, that's 54. And it's 54 hundredths. Honoring that label there. Now, we can simplify this. 42 ones, well, that's four tens and two ones, so that's the same thing as 42. Nothing really fancy right there to simplify. But right here, 24 tenths. By now, we want our students to see that 24 tenths, because anytime you have 10 tenths, you can cash it in for a whole number. So we want our students to see that that is equal to 2.4. Two whole numbers with four tenths left over. Similarly, we want them to see that 54 hundredths, so you can cash in these 50 hundredths for 5 tenths. So we want our students to see that this is equal to 0 0.54. See, there's 54 hundredths, all right? So now we've got all these partial products, and let's add them up. So we, let's add up the whole numbers. You've got 42 plus 2 plus nothing, so that equals 44 whole numbers. Now let's, let's add up the tenths. And in this case, we have four tenths and five tenths, so that gives us nine tenths. And then adding up the hundredths, we have no hundredths, no hundredths, and four hundredths. So that gives us 44 and 94 hundredths. Here they just want us to practice using that area model again. So it says Leanne multiplied eight times 4.3. And she got this answer, and our task is to check if that makes sense. Well, you know, starting off, though, 4.3 times 8 without using the area model, we know that 4.3 right here is pretty close to 4. And, of course, 8 is equal to 8. So we know that the answer is going to be pretty close to 32. So at least we know that her answer is reasonable. But let's use that area model. And remember, 8 times 4.3 can be thought of as finding the area of a rectangle. And in this case, the height of that rectangle is 8. 
and the width of that rectangle or the length of or the whatever <laughs> of that rectangle is four ones and three tenths. And then using multiplication, eight times four ones, that gives us 32 ones. And then over here, eight times three tenths, that gives us 24 tenths. And then we can find our little partial product. So right here, 32 ones, well, that is 32. And then here, 24 tenths, we want students to know that that is 2 and 4 tenths. And then we can add those together. We could do that in our head and get 34 and 4 tenths. Now, parents and teachers, if our students can't add this in their head, that's okay. Make them put it in a place value chart. It's really important that they see that these are the ones and these are the ones. So that's why we're going to add the 2 to the 2 uh, we don't want to go adding a whole number to the tenths or, you know, misaligning our numbers. So it's that return to that place value chart that's so important. And that wraps up 5th grade module 1 lesson 11, our beginning foray into multiplying decimals.